first lesson comes from the book of Job, the 38th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Here ends our first lesson. Our second lesson comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurances, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful and always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Our second lesson. Thank you. Our gospel lesson today comes from the gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings. As I share this week's message with you, I'm on vacation at our condo in Panama City Beach. And so I thought I would share some of the beauty of this place with you. The title of our message for this week is from the Gospel, and it is Let Us Go Across to the Other Side. In other words, the journey from the inside out. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we have not been here to our uh, retreat place in two and a half years. Usually every year right after Christmas, my husband Ted and I 
come down here to our condo for two weeks and it's a perfect time to do it because usually we've just had um, Christmas and all the craziness and busyness and chaos of, of seeing all these people you only get to see once in a while and um, but for me as a pastor also the busyness of church and the Christmas pageant and uh, worship and so many things so we come down here and we truly see it as a time of our own personal retreat our own spiritual retreat we come down here every January and I spend hours every day in prayer and meditation, reading, spiritual books, journaling, writing, um, resting. And so it's been two and a half years since we've had the opportunity for a spiritual retreat. And um, that's because in January of 2020, my husband had just had spine surgery and I had just had hip surgery the month before. And our doctors said, no, you cannot go. You need to be nearby in case anything happens, in case there are any complications. And then the following year, January 2021, of course, we were in the midst of a surge in the COVID pandemic. So again, we were not able to travel here. Um, and I'll tell you what a two and a half years it has been that we needed desperately a retreat and yet at that very time, we're not able to do it. And in the last two and a half years, my husband's had three major surgeries plus two eye surgeries, and I just had my one hip surgery. But it's been a challenging two and a half years. Throw in a global pandemic and having to learn to do my uh, jobs as pastor and also as professor in completely new and different and challenging ways. And um, so uh, I feel that maybe you feel similarly. Maybe you also need some time this summer for your own personal spiritual retreat. And I highly encourage you to take that time to go within yourself in prayer and contemplation and meditation so that you are more, uh, more able to then reach out to others when you yourself have been re-energized and restored and renewed. I mentioned every time I go on retreat, I read some spiritual books. And so this week, I read a book by um, a woman named Carol Lee Flinders. And she's written a lot about Christian women mystics, which many of you know is my field, my passion, and also my expertise. I teach a course on women mystics. Um, but the book I just read is a little different. She talks about some modern women, and not just Christian mystics, but um, a woman from the Jewish tradition, a woman from the Buddhist tradition, and modern day women, three of them are still living. And she um, invites all of us to reflect on their lives and the way they do these incredible um, forms of service um, to God and to others by first taking time to go within for that inward journey, that spiritual journey. Uh, so this ties in very much with this week's readings. 
um, the first reading is from the book of Job and many of us have probably felt like Job these last couple of years during this pandemic. I know many of you have communicated with me your own struggles during this time. Many of you have had struggles with health issues or fears about health, especially related to COVID. Many of you have worried about the health and well-being of your loved ones. Many of you have lost a loved one and are struggling with grief. Many of us have lost jobs, businesses, homes, and wonder how we're going to get our lives back on track. Many of us have struggled with the isolation and all of the relationship struggles that have happened during this time of the pandemic. And so that brings us to someone who experienced perhaps more struggles than any of us, and that is the biblical figure, Job. Now the book of Job, um, mainline biblical scholars say, is not a book that's meant to be taken literally. It is a story, kind of a, almost a spiritual folk story that raises big questions and big issues about God, but also about human suffering and how we as humans are to deal with that uh, and come to terms with that. The setting of this story, it begins with God saying to the evil spirit, the Satan, um, look at my my guy Job, what a, what a faithful and honorable and deeply spiritual man he is. And the Satan says, yeah, that's because everything's going great for him in his life. Let him, let him experience some struggles, some hardships, some suffering, and we'll see how faithful he is. And so it's, there's sort of like a contest. Um, and the Satan throws all kinds of horrible situations at Job to see if experiencing struggle and hardship and suffering will make him lose faith. And in fact, it doesn't. Um, but in today's first reading from the book of Job, it does make Job turn to God very deeply and say, God, what is going on? Why is all this horrible stuff happening? And God's answer in today's passage is less than satisfactory if we're truthful with ourselves because basically God just says it's a mystery. We'll never know the reasons for all of this suffering. But God said, um, you know, who are you to question the way things are, Job? God says, um, God speaks to Job out of a whirlwind and says, um, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who shut in the sea with doors when I made the clouds a garment and thick darkness, etc.? And, and basically, God's just saying, you know, Job, there are some things that are beyond um, our human understanding. And so we just have to know that God is with us in all of this and keep the faith. In the second reading, we hear another person who experienced extreme hardship and mostly because of his faith in God, and that is St. Paul. In 2 Corinthians, he goes through a litany of many of the things he's suffered in his life. He talks about his great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, etc. But Paul also goes on and says, but if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Behold, everything old has passed away everything 
is made new. And then he says, Behold, at an acceptable time I've listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. In other words, every day we're invited on a spiritual retreat. You don't really have to get away to do it. We can do it wherever we are. We can take that time to go within and to retreat for, from all of the struggles of the world and to go within to that place where we are with God. Um, one of the women, uh, the four women that uh, Carol Lee Flinders focuses on in her book, which is called Enduring Grace, um, is a woman named Tenzin Palmo, and she's a Buddhist woman who was made quite famous because she lived in a cave all by herself in the Himalayas for 12 years in prayer and meditation. And now she speaks to different groups around the world about her experience, her experiences, and and she says in particular, she sees here in America this deep hunger for people to have that inner life, that deep spiritual life, but she talks about how challenging it is in contemporary America because we have so many distractions. We have, we have so many things that kind of um, keep us focusing other places rather than taking that time to go within, within ourselves in prayer and contemplation. Um, but that's exactly what I'm encouraging all of us to do. And I think that's what Jesus meant when he said, let us go across to the other side. The other side of life is a life that focuses not on, um, not on the, the external things, not on all the struggles, not on all the suffering, but that takes the time to go within ourselves and to live from that place of deep communion with God. And then after we've gone within and had that time of communion with God, then we're able to go from inside out to minister to the hurts and the needs of others. I love today's gospel about Jesus. Jesus has been preaching and teaching and feeding thousands of hungry people and performing miracles and doing all kinds of things. And so in today's gospel, he gets into a boat with his disciples and he says, let us go now to the other side. And what does he do? He falls fast asleep on a cushion in the boat in the middle of a storm. Well, all of the things we've been struggling with these last couple of years, surgeries, the pandemic, uh, isolation, grief, loss, illness, you name it. Those are like the storms of life. And Jesus somehow is in the middle, is in, in the middle of all these storms, and is with us in the boat, but is able to rest peacefully, to sleep peacefully. Why? I would say, because Jesus is constantly going within himself to that place where he is one with God, and it is from that deep place within that then he goes out and ministers to the needs of others. And I believe that that's what Jesus is calling us to do. The final woman in the book um, that I just read about today is Sister Helen Prejean. 
and she is has made been made quite famous by the movie based on her book Dead Man Walking and the beautiful actress Susan Sarandon played Sister Helen Prejean in the movie and um, it's a movie uh, about a Catholic sister, a sister of St. Joseph, who, whom God called to accompany uh, men who are on death row and to be that presence of Christ with them as they face their final moments. She also takes time to be with the families of the victims and to advocate against the death penalty. But when people said to her, where do you get your energy from? How can you do such challenging and difficult word work? She said this, it's very important to assimilate what's happening in our lives. I find that I cannot function if I don't have that sense of being at the center of myself and at the soul of my soul so that I'm truly operating from the inside out. Sister Helen Prejean takes time each day to go within herself for prayer and meditation and that is what gives her the strength to then go forth and minister to those in deepest need as they face their death, their actual execution. And she says that, they, she's been asked, where do you find God? in all of this and she says i don't find god god finds me god is like this surge this overwhelming surge of power and energy and love it's like the ocean that is is without bounds and in that ocean the boundaries that separate us from other human beings and their suffering, those boundaries dissolve. So sisters and brothers in Christ, I pray that um, sometime this summer you can take time for your own spiritual retreat, but also that you can begin to look at each day as a time to go within yourself to that soul of your souls, to that place where God dwells within you. And from that deep communion with God, you can then find that, um, that, that you have that energy surge, that love surge that will work through you to reach out to others to minister to them in their times of great struggle. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. Feet may fail and fear.
surrounds me. You've never failed and you won't start now. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.